This is Andy Perroir for Boxing Social and I'm delighted to be joined by promoter Eddie Hearn at the Wayne Forges or at the Skashi and Alan versus Brown. Eddie, how are you doing? Good, good. Happy Good Friday. Thanks to people for coming out on their day off and uh, looking forward to tomorrow. I don't really know what we're going to get. I mean, I know what we're going to get from uh, Connor Ben, from Josh Kelly, from Cordina Townend, from Chisora Gashi. I don't really know what we're going to get from Alan Brown, but I'm excited to see. I know yesterday you did a, a quite a lengthy interview with Rob Tebber, but we didn't really touch a lot on this card. Just talking about Dave Allen and how impressed you've been with what you've seen over social media for how serious he's taken this camp. Re really impressed, but so he should. You know, like, I mean, we're all sort of surprised and happy that Dave Allen's taking this seriously. He's headlining the O2 on Sky Sports, so he should be, and he has. He weighed 17.6. I don't think he's been 17.6 since he was about 12 years old. So um, he's in great shape. The, the, the difficulty is just putting it together. You know, new trainer, O2, main event, fighting a guy. In my opinion, Lucas Brown is the big favourite in this fight because for some reason, Dave Allen's the favourite and that's because people have been putting money on him. But like, what win has he ever had to tell you that he deserves to be beating Lucas Brown? Nick Webb, he was losing every round against Nick Webb. So he's going to have to produce something that we haven't seen before. You know, feel good stories are great, but they don't make you win fights. They don't make you a good fighter. So, but if you can combine a great win with a feel-good story. He has a chance tomorrow night to really change his life. People have spoken about Lucas's victory over Kamal Sokolowski and the feel that Kamal was victorious in that fight. Firstly, how much, how easy could it be for people to read too much into that bout and Lucas's performance? We've seen it before. I watched that fight on the way home. It was on someone's Instagram Live. I had him winning by a round and the knockdown was like a balance. It is so difficult to go into a fight. Look at Sam Egginson when he went into that fight. You know, he was supposed to be fighting Brandon Reels. He can't focus on what he's got to do. He's just thinking, just get through the fight. I'm fighting four or five weeks later. So, and Sokolowski can fight as well. And over six rounds can, can cause anyone problems. So Lucas Brown has looked solid since the Dillian White defeat. He's had a couple of good wins. More importantly, he's in good shape. You know, he's in much better shape than he was for the Dillian White fight. But that was a heavy, heavy knockout that Dillian White handed to him. So he's definitely in the tail end of his career. But he's operated and won at such a higher level than Dave Allen that... I think it's going to be a very entertaining fight. Dave's just got to actually let his hands go and do and listen to Darren Barker. You know, because he's worked really hard. He's put everything in. And now it's up to him. No one else. What can the future hold for Dave? Dave said he'd be open to a Derek Chisora fight. Yeah, if it's a big fight, the David Price fight. The one thing we know is, you know, Dave's managed to carve out enough money and enough opportunities to buy houses and hopefully be okay. A victory tomorrow night will mean that he can go on and have a big payday and a big heavyweight fight. So. That's what he's fighting for. He won't be buying houses, he'll be buying streets in Doncaster. So that's what I want. You know, I don't believe that Dave Allen can go and win world heavyweight titles and unify divisions. What I want him to do is entertain the public and make sure he leaves the sport happy and financially secure. And I believe that victory at the O2 tomorrow night against Lucas Brown would, would, would enable him to do all of those things. Chisora Gashi as well. I was looking up and watching Dave Caldwell. Yeah. Was, a, was a surprise by the way? He was, yeah. I mean, he was 18 stone seven which is probably about half a stone or eight or nine pound heavier than they thought he'd be. And Coldwell sort of went, we've been eating something last night. So he looks in good shape though, but he's heavy. And you know, I hope that doesn't slow him down because Gashi, it's Senad Gashi's birthday tomorrow night. And he is going to be fighting with absolutely everything. This is one tough son of a bitch that has had a big camp. And he looks at this and thinks, wow, beat Chisora and I've cracked it. I'm going to get that big fight. You know, and I think this is a massive banana skin for Derek Chisora. He's got to be motivated in this fight. He's got to be up for it because otherwise, it's going to be very, very hard work. I know Derek's mentioned and his name's been rumoured for potentially stepping in with AJ. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. Do you think maybe he might be looking towards that? No, because if he don't, I mean, I don't think Chisora is the guy for June one anyway. But even if he wants to be, he has to win in style tomorrow night. So he can't be looking past that he's got to try and look good against Sam Gashi, which is going to be difficult. It's going to be a war, that fight, because Gashi won't quit. And, you know, you saw him against Take, and that was on four days' notice. This is going to be a war, and Chisora's got a bit... I, I think Chisora can stop him late, but I think it's going to be... It's going to, he's going to have to come through some hairy moments. We've got the return of Josh Kelly as well. I know he's disappointed yeah. not to go out in Sheffield. How excited you to see him back in the ring? So excited, because I think he's one of the best prospects in the world. He's got a really good fight. Like, the team from Poland, they're 17-0, good amateur background. And more importantly, like you don't, you guys don't get to see what we see, which is the setup of the teams, how they travel, who they travel with, who they bring with them, how they live in the hotels. You know, so you see this guy who brings promoter, manager, trainer, nutritionist, gets to the hotel, 
asks for the local gym, does his sessions, eats right, you know, rather than a guy who just turns up and sort of thinks, oh, this is great, I'm boxing in London. So this guy's coming to win, and that's what I want. Unfortunately for Ranowski, he's fighting Josh Kelly, who I believe is one of the best prospects in the world. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to him. And again, tough for Josh, because Josh has been out for, I don't know, um, seven months, something like that, six, seven months. And for Joe Caldina. Caldina against Townend is a brilliant fight for the British and Commonwealth lightweight titles. Joe Caldina has been out for, again, seven months with a hand injury. And this is a guy, uh, Townend, who is not as skillful as Caldina, but punches very hard, moves up from super feather to lightweight because he was just too big. I think it's a, he's going to be a handful. And um, Conor Ben as well. You know, Conor Ben's got a tough fight returning from a very bad hand injury. And you never see him in a bad fight. So it's a stacked night. Just want to touch on Josh as well. Um, Adam Booth said yesterday about the EBU have made him the mandatory challenger for their title now. David Avenici and knocking out Kerman Leharaga. What was firstly your thoughts on that? It was a great win for David. I was pleased for him and Neil Marsh. Um, I think that, uh, you know, more importantly, that is a, that was a big fight. Now it's a really big fight. Avenici against Josh Kelly. You've got the history, you've got everything that happened. There is a rematch clause in place with Laraja and, and Avenici in which you stop us. But that's OK, because actually I'd like Josh Kelly to box at Madison Square Garden. So that's the plan for him. And then they could do their rematch and then Josh fights the winner. So that's all right. But the Aven no disrespect to the European title. It's an amazing title. But Josh has aspirations only to be world champion. So if we didn't win the European on the way, it's no great shakes. But certainly the Avenici and Josh Kelly fight is a brilliant fight. That's something which you've just brought up, uh, Madison Square Garden. I wanted to touch on. You've just mentioned Josh Kelly. The likes of Josh Bowati have been linked with the card, Cal Yafoy, uh, Cal Brook, etc. Um, from looking over social media, a lot of the fans are coming a bit concerned that we will see a lot of our fighters going abroad and we won't see them as much over here. What are your thoughts on that to try and appease those fears? Oh, I just think that's certainly something that we're looking at. But I think when you get an opportunity to put a British young talent on a stage like Madison Square Garden on June the 1st, I think it's a no-brainer. And you've got to understand, all these young fighters would give their left arm to be on that card. So that's what you're dealing with. People like Josh Kelly, Josh Bratzi, for me, their absolute home is Britain. Because they're the future. You know, they're going to be, you know, Coley, even Caldina, uh, Josh Kelly, Bratzi, Caldina, uh, Fitzgerald now, you know, these kind of guys. They need to be headlining these UK shows in proper big, tough fights. But if we can sprinkle them in, and give him the chance to box at Madison Square Garden in front of 20,000 people. It's an amazing opportunity for him. I just also wanted to ask you another question on um, the June 1st card. Rob Tebbert from Boxing Social interviewed Dillian not. White yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, if he is, I wouldn't mind that. I'll be able to watch that. I'd enjoy yeah. seeing him take a few yeah, shots. Yeah. But he uh, interviewed Dillian White yesterday morning, and Dillian said that he definitely thinks that AJ's taken TUEs and he's got some form of TUEs exemptions. That he's bringing up the likes of ADHD and all sorts, and got quite for boldness, listing off quite a few things which I know are quite bizarre. But he, he was very determined to get a point, get across the fact that, in his opinion, AJ is getting to you. Is what are your thoughts on that? No, I don't know anything about boldness or ADHD. Um, all I know is that AJ is the most tested fighter on the planet. Throughout every camp, throughout the whole year, ran on a random testing program, he's never failed a drugs test. He will never fail a drugs test. There's a lot of haters out there, I'm not even talking about Dillian White, that just presume that he lives, because he lives an incredible life and he's a great athlete. But you can't escape the testing that he has. And Jarrell Miller just found that out. There's no escape. You can't dope and have the VADA testing in place that these guys have and get away with it. It's every week. Two, two, and AJ's with UCAD as well. So it's two free tests a week. They, they got him yesterday. You see on his social media, straight in. You, know, he's, you, can't, you can't escape. He's not an idiot. He don't need it. You know, these guys need to dope to beat Joshua. That's the difference. And the fact is, is that Jarrell Miller, after everything that he said, needed to do that in his head to beat Joshua. Something told Jarrell Miller, I've got to do this to beat him. It's quite flattering, really. Obviously, I don't know the ins and outs of it, and I'm not saying, I'm not giving my own opinion on it at all, but when you look at Jarrell Miller's top five, he likes to walk his opponents down, non-stop throwing punches, were you surprised at all that maybe he had him in quite out doing something like this sooner? Maybe he was. Maybe he was. But he's never been tested as, as, in, as extensively as we put fighters under. So, and that applies to AJ and any opponent. You can't get away with it. So we wanted to make sure. And, and I said in the interview yesterday, I'm quite pleased that he 
uh, we found out. I don't want AJ fighting a guy who's taking uh, Andrew Bow and growth hormone or whatever. Like he's going to have an edge in a fight. So you know, people think um, Jeremy Miller's got great endurance. He had great endurance. Questions asked potentially, but he's never been tested as extensively as the, what we put him under for this fight. And as soon as we put him under that, he's done. But surely have the brain. To, you can't get away with it. So you can't be cheating if you're having this kind of testing. Yet he still chose to try. What, what planet are you on? You know? You just don't do it. You're un, you can't get away with it. Don't do it. So AJ must have put the fear of Christ in him. Because he still chose to do it. I also wanted to get your thoughts or what you know about how Dizone feel about it. How, how, what have Dizone said to you? What discussions have you had with him about Miller failing his drugs test? I'm disappointed. I mean, look, the, the, with all due respect to Miller, they're interested in Anthony Joshua. It's the Anthony Joshua show, but they still want a good, credible opponent, as we all do. And there will be one. So they're disappointed. They're obviously just getting into boxing now. So for us, although this is quite unusual, it is another day at the office, unfortunately. For them, it's like, whoa, what's happened here? <laughs> whoa, drugs, oh! So um, we're speaking to them every day, and we won't select an opponent without the zone and Sky being happy with that opponent. So we've got enough time, six weeks tomorrow, and... Now it's not like it's six weeks because people now have got it in their head who we're talking to, it might be them. So they're already in camp, you know, and, and some of them were already in camp anyway. So, um, yeah, the aim is, is that uh, probably, mm, I don't know, I don't want to put a day on it, but middle of next week we will announce the new opponent for Anthony Joshua. When you take into consideration this fight not happening now between AJ and Miller, how would you say the zone are in terms of their happiness with how everything has gone from the beginning of your partnership? Really happy. I mean, the numbers are great. Um, we've signed so many world champions. I think that now with the Canelo Jacobs deal being done between Golden Boy and Matchroom, AJ's debut, Usyk on May 25 is a massive catch for them. Andrade going again in June. Next, day, next week's show in LA is incredible. We've rung Savai Estrada, rematch of the fight of the year. Roman against the Henny, uh, Jesse Vargas against Soto. Good, the numbers are great. To be honest, like, May 4th is probably the first super fight that the zone have done. And that's massive for them because the whole idea of the model is you don't have to pay pay-per-view. But you can only sell that model if you've got massive names and pay-per-view fights. I, I missed out Golovkin as well in that, in that list as well. So like, over that period of a month, you've got Canelo, Usyk, Golovkin and AJ. I mean, it's pretty fucking horny. So, yeah, they're really happy and just, just, just starting to get their teeth into it. I mean, it's been six months since they first launched. So it's a very short period of time, but I feel like the inroads they've made has been fantastic. You just mentioned this next month. Is that maybe what they expected sooner, this super fight that you talked about, the logs of Canelo and AJ boxing oh, on the channels? Yeah, maybe. I mean, they had, they had it. They had Canelo boxing in December. They had AJ boxing in September. So they've had them on the channels before. I would have liked to have, have had one of those big fights coming into that back end of last year. Instead, it happened in 2019. I think a lot of things happened that we didn't necessarily anticipate. ESPN stepped up and said, no, we're going to spend the same amount of money. Al Heyman said, I've got to do it as well. So it's a massive, you know, there's huge competition in the American market right now. So all I know is, is the schedule that's in front of us, which is outstanding. Everyone's happy, everyone's gearing up. Mainly for May 4th, you know, the Joshua's thing's got to get sorted, but May 4th is a massive night for zone. Canelo Jacobs, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a huge fight. So they've got that, and then, like I said, Usyk, and then Joshua, and then um, and Golovkin, and that's in, one, that's in four weeks. So now the plan is in July, August, September, October to be making those big fights. Obviously, September, we know Canelo Jacobs' winner will probably fight Golovkin, and then in December, Joshua will fight. Hopefully, that's Joshua Wilder. So if they lock in those two fights, plus the other schedule, they've had it off. So it's a lot of work to do, but at the moment we've got a massive schedule lined up and uh, looking forward to seeing the impact that those fights have. You just touched on those other channels like ESPN, etc., who have invested heavily into boxing now. Is that something maybe you regret revealing the details when you no, look you back on it? Because you can't, you can't stage a press conference or make an impact in a market and go, we have done a massive deal with the zone. And everyone goes, well, how much is it? Because the, the first thing is, I've never heard of DAZN, so it can't be that big. So you have to tell the truth. It's a billion dollar deal. It's the biggest TV deal in, in the history of the sport. Okay? And we've got a load of money. So fighters, you're going to find out because 
everybody talked. I'm going to make an offer to a fighter. He's going to tell his manager. He's going to tell another fighter. He's going to tell the media. Wow. So, no. Our, our style is very much crash, bang, wallet, you know, and in your face. And I'd rather be truthful. This is the deal. This is the size of the deal. You're going to get a lot of money. It's now it's more about endurance. You know, who wants to keep spending the money? And, and at some point, everybody's got to slow down and calm down because the money's mental. But good luck to the fighters. What did you know about the zone before the deal? A lot. We've been working with them for about four years. So, yeah. so we've been working with them since their launch in Japan, in Germany. We've been working with Perform for 15 years. Um, the zone launched in Japan, Canada, Germany, um, obviously now Spain, Italy. We're one of the biggest sports providers. You know, for people watching Boxing Social, you may not know boxing is only a small part of Matchroom's business. Well, bigger now, but you know, we've got the darts, we've got snooker, we've got the pool, we've got golf, we've got table tennis, we've got fishing. Like, we're one of the biggest providers of sports TV content in the world. And we have been providing DAZN with content on all their platforms in their territories for many years. So in answer to your question, a lot. Well, Eddie, and I appreciate the time. I know you've got a big way to speak to you, so thanks for being to Boxing Social. Thank you, mate. Cheers, mate.